Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm drawing to a close on a series that I've been teaching on for four weeks talking about the power of faith-filled words. I'm not going to be through today, but this week will probably be the end of my series. And I would really like to encourage you to get this new material that we have. We have DVDs and CDs on a teaching the power of faith-filled words. This is a series that I taught in England in 2011, and I tell you, it was powerful. We saw a lot of miracles happen. And so please take advantage of this. You know, if you need to, we are making each one of these teachings, each five, uh, there's five teachings in this album, and we make them all available free of charge. You can come in and get them, or you can go to our website and get it on uh, MP3. It's not the finances that's the motivation for me urging you to get this. It's a truth that would change your life. I really believe that. So please take advantage of that and realize we're drawing to an end on this series. I was teaching from Mark chapter 11, and this is where Jesus cursed the fig tree. He didn't touch it. He just spoke to it, and it died. Within 24 hours, it was visible that the tree had died from the roots up. And Peter was just shocked by this and said, Lord, the fig tree that you cursed is withered away. And the Lord spoke to him and said, Peter, have faith in God. I believe he was saying, what's wrong with you guys? Why, do, why are you shocked to see the power that is available through faith? They were just carnal. They were limited to the physical realm and the way that they had seen things. And when somebody came along operating in the supernatural power of God, they were shocked. And so he began to tell them, how he did this. And here's what he said in Mark chapter 11, verse 23. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Man, that is a powerful, powerful truth. You know, I've taught on this a lot, but this, there, there is more to this, I think, than what any of us have ever seen or understood. Three times in this passage, he talks about the words that you say. If you are going to release your faith and get miraculous results the way that Jesus did, you've got to start believing in the power of words. You need to quit just depending on everything in the natural, physical, carnal things and start recognizing that words are what's powerful. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18, 21. So three times he talked about how important our words are, and as we ended our program yesterday, I was emphasizing that he specifically said to say unto the mountain. The mountain is symbolic of your problem. Whatever your problem is, speak to your problem. Don't speak to God about your problem. Now, I'm not saying that you can't pray and tell the Lord your concerns and your desires and things like that. But I'm talking about when it comes time for you to see a miracle come to pass, you need to take your authority and talk directly to whatever your problem is. If you've got pain in your body, talk to it and say, Pain in the name of Jesus, I command you to stop. And I know that there's people watching this program that think, this is weird. You're talking to pain? That's not a person. It's not a live thing. I don't understand it all, but I've, I've adopted, I've embraced what Jesus said here, and I've done this, and I'm telling you that I've had pain leave. I've had visible things leave. I've uh, had tumors dissolve. I've spoken to goiters and seen goiters just m depart. I mean, be gone. I don't understand it all. I, you don't have to understand it all. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. All you got to do is just believe the word. Jesus said, speak to your problem. You know, there's this book uh, entitled, Who Switched Off My Brain? Somebody gave that to me, and I, I didn't read the whole thing. I'm not sure that I could recommend everything that's in there, but I read a portion. They highlighted a portion that went right along with the things I was saying. And this medical doctor, 
said that each cell in your body communicates with your brain, I think it was billions of times a day. I'm not sure the exact number, but anyway, it's an astronomical number that there is just this constant communication between your brain and the cells in your body. And each cell, this doctor was describing it as like having a, a padlock on each cell with the combination lock on it. And that lock keeps things from getting into that cell that shouldn't be in there, such as cancer or, you know, all kinds of things that can affect the cells of your body. And said a normal, healthy cell will reject cancer cells. Everybody has cancer cells, radical cells in your body, but a healthy body doesn't allow them to take root and grow. But this doctor was explaining that if you get negative in your outlook and you get to thinking negative, if you get, if you get depressed or discouraged, I've read other medical things that say that depression suppresses your immune system. And anyway, I'm not sure the exact medical terminologies, but what it amounts to is that the way you think affects this communication between your brain and the cells in your body. And if you get negative, and if you go to speaking sickness and pain and talking about it and doing these things, then it changes that combination on each cell in your body. It makes it so that things that normally wouldn't enter into your cells do in, enter into your cells. And this is how sickness and disease, etc., starts. And this medical doctor was saying that a healthy brain, a person who is thinking positively, speaking positively and stuff like this, it is one of the strongest things that we have to heal this body because your brain and your cells are in communication with each other constantly. And I believe in a sense this is what Jesus is saying, that you have to say something and not doubt it in your heart because your mind knows whether or not you truly believe something with all of your heart, whether you're just saying it like a parrot or whether you really believe it. And if you don't believe it, then every cell in your body is in communication with that, knows the hypocrisy, knows that this isn't real. You know, again, I just don't have the words to paint the picture of this the way that I see it in my life. But my heart, there's a scripture, I'd have to look up the exact reference, but it says the heart knows his own bitterness and a stranger intermeddles not therewith. And that's just an old English for saying, in your heart, you know, at a heart level, you know what you really believe, what you're, what's really going on. There's times in our life that we're confused, and there's times that you can get around other people and you can let them confuse. But at a heart level, you know whether or not you really believe something or not. And if you sit there and say, in the name of Jesus, I am healed, your heart immediately knows that and your mind knows and it'll communicate it to every cell in your body and if you really believe it well then it'll start releasing health to every cell in your body and your body will start recovering but if you don't believe it your every cell in your body knows that I know that some of you watching this are thinking you're imputing uh, things to like the cell cellular level of your body, like each cell has a mind. Again, I don't know the way to explain all of this. I don't have to know it. I know that there are many of you that until you can just figure it out, you just can't uh, let go and believe something. But man, I a long time learned that your head can actually get in the way of receiving from God. Now, there's a balance here. I'm not talking about mindlessly just believing whatever with no benefit, but I'm talking about I've gone to the Scripture. I've seen the life of Jesus and other people. I've studied the Word, and I've seen it work. I've seen it work in my own life. I've seen it work in, in people that I've prayed for, and I've just accepted this, and I believe it. I don't know exactly how it all works. I'm just trying to say all of these things to convince people who are into all of these intellectual things and have to have some medical doctor come along and say, the word isn't good enough for you. You have to have somebody else with a DHD or DDS or something behind 
their name in order to believe them. I'm just saying these things trying to help you, but I, my faith is based on, on what Jesus said right here. And he says, if you say to your problem, be removed, be cast into the sea, and if you don't doubt it on a heart level, but you believe what you say comes to pass, it will come to pass. And I believe that. And I've seen it work. I am seeing it work. I have seen hundreds, thousands of people healed off of this exact same thing, and I just know that it works. And I'm telling you, a key here is you have to doubt not in your heart. You have to believe that what you say comes to pass. And I think I made this point at the very beginning of my teaching when I started talking about this, but every time you tell a person that you're going to be someplace at 10 o'clock and you don't get there until 10.15, did you know you are communicating not only to that person that your words don't mean anything and that they aren't trustworthy, but you are communicating to every cell in your body that, you know what, I, the words that this guy speaks, you can't count on them. He doesn't mean it. He does not follow through on everything he says. And it hurts you on a heart level. It keeps you from believing and receiving from God. And again, I, I'm aware that the vast majority of people watching my program are going to think that I'm actually absolutely crazy and how could you think and believe this way? I'm getting results that most people won't. I've been sick once in 44 years. I have walked in supernatural health. I've had uh, physical things, broken bones, and I've spoken to them and I've been miraculously healed. I've had sickness and disease lead me. I've seen my son raised from the dead. I've seen miracles happen. Most people would love to have the results that I get. But when I start telling you what it is that I believe is making it come to pass, people will sit there, oh, I can't believe that. I wouldn't ever accept that. And yet you want the results and you're going to reject the root that produced the fruit. I'm just challenging you. I'm aware that this is contrary to our natural world and the way that most people live, but it is not contrary to the Word. I challenge you to go to these scriptures. Look at this. Jesus said, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, talking about your words, you've got to say this, to the problem, be removed, be thou cast into the sea, and not doubt in your heart. You can't doubt this. You've got to believe it, but you have to believe that the things which you say come to pass. And you can't just sit there and go for a whole week and say things that you don't mean, misrepresent your product to other people, lie to people about this, be late for that, live your whole life inconsistent with believing that the things that you say are true, and then all of a sudden get serious. And now you're going to believe God and you aren't going to back off your confession. It's going to work. It doesn't work that way. Your heart doesn't just change on a dime like that. Your heart has to be molded over a period of time. And I can guarantee you, if you live all week long carnal and lying and misrepresenting and saying things that you don't mean and, this is very important, listening to people say things that you don't agree with and you don't believe, but nonetheless you still sit there and listen to it. That just confuses your heart. It takes away this faith in words. You by your actions are showing that you don't really believe in words. You don't believe in your own words. You don't believe in the words of other people. And that's the reason you'll listen to people say things that you know aren't true. For instance, if you are a real believer, and if you believe that by his stripes we are healed, you know that the Lord will heal us of anything. And yet you'll listen to things on radio, television, talk about how this is incurable. It cannot be healed. You ought to stop right there. You ought to counter that. You ought to reject those words. If you don't, it's going to confuse your own heart. And then when you start trying to speak that you're healed of cancer, those other words that you've heard, that your heart will be saying, which one's true? You've been listening to this. You've been reading all the medical journals about all the reasons why it can happen and that this stage four, this is what the result is and here's how it's going to happen. And you went back and remembered Aunt Susie and how she died of it. And you think, and your heart is hearing all of this stuff. And you fill yourself with all this doubt and unbelief. And then all of a sudden on Sunday, you're going to be 
committed to God and you're going to go and believe God and believe that you're healed and say, I command this to go. I am healed in the name of Jesus. You've confused your heart. It, you might be saying the right things, but you can't believe with all of your heart because your heart's divided. Your heart is going to go the direction of all of the information that's fed it. And most of us are feeding ourselves with a lot of junk, a lot of stuff. You know, if you're watching this program, I commend you for watching a program where I'm talking about the Word of God and saying these things. But I can guarantee you the vast majority of people who watch this Christian program will sit there and also watch something today that is going to counter everything you believe in and come against the truths of the Word of God and maybe use adultery or murder or lying or stealing for entertainment and you will expose your heart to those same things that you've exposed it to the truth right here. And you know what that does? It's you're double-minded. You're wavering in your heart. And it confuses your heart. I'm telling you, if you are going to receive, you have to not doubt in your heart, but you need to get to a place that you believe the words that you say will come to pass. And it's not going to happen if you live a lifestyle where you just allow other people to speak things that you know that are lying and you don't counter it. Now, again, to some degree, we are going to encounter this stuff because we are in a world that is contrary to God. It's a fallen world. And I don't believe, I'm not preaching that you just withdraw and go into a monastery and avoid anything that would not be conducive to faith and the results that you want. I don't think that that's what the Lord called us to do. We're the salt of the earth, and if we're going to really salt the earth, we've got to get out of the salt shaker. So I believe that it's, you know, we need to be in this world, but not of this world. And even though I believe that we are still going to be confronting some of this stuff just as we go through life, we could limit it a tremendous amount. Many of us are just using this junk of the world to entertain ourselves, and it confuses our heart and it hinders what God wants to do. Jesus, I believe, is giving a tremendous key right here that you speak, you take your authority, and instead of speaking to God, you speak to the problem and you speak your faith and then you doubt not in your heart, but you have to believe that the words that you speak come to pass. And if you can do that, you will have whatsoever you say. And brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, that does not happen easily. It doesn't happen without effort. It doesn't happen with you just plugged into the same stuff that your unbelieving neighbor is plugged into. If you eat the same stuff that the unbelievers eat, I'm talking about spiritually, if you digest this and take it in, you're going to have the same results that the unbelievers have. It's not just a matter of what you know, but it's a matter of how strong you are in what you know. And you aren't going to be strong if you sit there and let all of the conflicting unbelief and stuff come against you. You need to limit the unbelief that comes against you. You know, I hadn't got time today. I'm not going to take the time to teach on this, but I've got a teaching entitled Hardness of Heart that would just amplify what I've been saying today, I mean, a hundred times over. And the last teaching in that set is from Matthew chapter 17. And Jesus' disciples tried to cast the demon out of a boy, and they couldn't do it. And they came and said, why couldn't we cast him out? And Jesus didn't say it's because of your lack of faith. He didn't say it's because of your little faith. Now, I have to say this. I'm not against anybody or any translation, but there is a translation the NIV that says it's because of your little faith. But if you would go, that's in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. If you would look, the NIV also omits verse 21 and doesn't even put it in the Bible. I tell you, that is wrong, wrong, wrong. I don't care how you slice that. That's not what it's talking about. Because the rest of that Matthew 17, 20 goes on to say it's because of your unbelief for if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed you should say unto this mountain be thou removed be thou cast into the sea and doubt not in your heart it'd come to pass and so he's saying in that verse 
that it's not the huge amount of faith, which the NIV says it's your little faith, implying you have to have big faith. No, Jesus didn't say it's your little faith. He says it's your unbelief that's the problem. You know, I just brought up a subject here that I know many of you are not relating to because this is something that is just so ground into us, we think, no, wait a minute. If I have faith, I automatically don't have any unbelief. And if I have any unbelief, then I automatically don't have faith. No, that's not true. You can believe and yet waver in your heart. You, the problem wasn't that the disciples didn't have faith. They had faith. The Lord didn't tell them, oh, you little faith. He told them, the problem is your unbelief. And unbelief comes through all of our exposure to anything contrary to what God has to say. And in case you hadn't come to this conclusion yet, the vast majority of all of the news that you're going to hear is going to be contrary to what God has to say about it. The vast majority of all the conversation about the water cooler that you're going to hear is people speaking out their doubt and unbelief. They aren't speaking the Word of God. The vast majority of all of your friends and your relatives are not going to be speaking forth what the Word says. They're going to be speaking what they have. Instead of doing what uh, Mark eleven twenty three, you shall have whatsoever you say, most people are saying what they have instead of having what they say. There's a huge difference between that. And because of this, most of us are just so exposed to all of this doubt and unbelief that it, it confuses your heart and keeps this promise from Mark eleven twenty-three 23 from coming to pass in our life because our heart doesn't believe in the power of words. We've, been, we've trained our heart not to believe in the power of words, not to believe in the things that we say, that there's just all kinds of things out there, and it makes a divided heart, and it stops the power of God from operating. If you are really going to see the supernatural power of God operate in your life, you've got to get a sensitive heart which that whole teaching on hardness of heart talks about what causes our heart to become hardened, what, uh, how you can reverse this, and the very things that have made us insensitive to God, if you reverse the process, you can turn around and become super sensitive to God. Boy, these are powerful things that I'm talking about. And I got off onto all of this by talking about the power of words. You've got to get to where you speak faith-filled words and also to where you only listen to faith-filled words. And when something comes contrary to faith, when it's unbelief, when it's doubt, when it's been born of the devil, you need to reject that. You need to judge those words and throw them down. I had grown up with God puts us through things to make us stronger people. You get healed if it's God's will. And if you don't get healed, then he wants you to go through it. Listening to things that people said, like, you know, God's trying to teach you something. He doesn't heal everybody. He heals some people. I heard people talking at church about, you know, God had a different plan and God made me sick. The way I was raised, God would get you. I felt like God had, that God had punished me. The church I grew up in was big on just performance. I was such a law-based, legalistic person and didn't even know it. Really devastated with legalism. I was operating in a law mindset. I had a law perspective. Always being focused uh, on the law. Deep into religion. I grew up in church. I was raised in church. A denomination that was very legalistic. I came from a Baptist background. I come from a Catholic. I was raised a preacher's kid. I was a missionary kid, grew up on the mission field taught the Bible my whole life, got saved at four years old. And I had been in and out of church since I was five years old. I was saved when I was eight, and I was saved just to stay out of hell. Saved and stuck. Until we heard about Andrew Walnick, and he began to explain. And Andrew just countered all of that with the Bible. No one had ever explained those scriptures so beautifully. This just made me over on the inside. This, I'm totally different. I'm a different person. And when I finally seen the truth, it was just, it was awesome. And it still to this day is just amazing. His teaching was freeing. It grabbed my heart because I had never heard 
that our sins were not imputed to us, not put to our account. This makes sense. The Bible makes sense to me, and he's ringing true to what I'm reading in the Bible. You didn't have to perform in order to gain a relationship with God that he loved you. It took the religion out of it and made it all about relationship. And then everything you've studied for your whole life, all of a sudden it comes into sync. It's like, pow. The spirit came over and just went, whoo. And it all lined up. That clicked and all of a sudden things became so real and so understandable. And you get this revelation on the inside of you. And I wept. I sat on the side of the road and I wept. All of a sudden, the Bible made sense. And now, I live in the blessings of God. My life just changed, and it changed for the better. Life has just gotten better and better. Life is good when you have hope. And God is just good. We have a life now that we've never had before in every area. What I found was victory, where we didn't have any before. I really am grateful that he submitted to the Lord because I'm reaping the results of it. Andrew's complete teaching titled, The Power of Faith-Filled Words, was recorded live at a recent conference. It's available on either CD or DVD, or if you prefer, you can get the DVD as seen on TV. Each is available for 16 pounds. Remember to specify CD, DVD, or DVD as seen on TV when you contact us. This series is also available for audio download absolutely free on our website. Go to awme.net, click on Resources at the top of the page, and then MP3 Downloads on the left. The fifth audio teaching in today's series is available for three pounds. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will send this fifth CD titled, Speak to the Mountain About God, Free of Charge. You can use your credit card to order resources by telephone. Our helpline number is 01922-473-300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44-1922-473-300. Helpline hours are from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. If the lines are busy, you can visit our website where you can order ministry materials 24 hours a day, seven days a week at awme.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We hope to hear from you today. When Andrew and Jamie were young, they went to a conference on biblical prosperity. They desperately wanted to get the teaching, but simply could not afford it. Andrew promised God that if he was ever in a position to make his teaching available, he would never deny it to someone for lack of funds. And that's what motivated me really to give, is uh, the fact that he gives his stuff away. Our hearts are just tied with what Andrew's doing, what he's trying to accomplish. A partnership is helping do what I can't do. I know that I'm a part of something so big. And my gifts can help reach the nations and the people. Whoever has ears to hear, they will hear. 